And hopefully we like take his only spell here. That's eh, not great. So forest, 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 waste, breaker. And now he's just gonna get to play all of his cards off the top. So we've effectively mulliganed to five because he mulliganed to five. <laughs> Uh, Tainted Remedy is for Rally, and for other decks playing Shambling Vents. The, the thing about a card like, um, he's drawn two cards, so I'm going to duress him here, because hopefully we're just going to curve out with these. Uh, we got Explosive Vegetations, alright, so Forest, Forest... Breaker, cause um, the thing about infinite obliteration is that infinite obliteration is often a one for zero. We can we can cast it consistently in this deck. Like being able to cast infinite obliteration is not the reason we're not playing it. We're not playing it because you often can't afford to be playing a spell that doesn't interact with the cards that they've drawn. So I definitely think transgress the mind is better than that, and duress is better against like the red decks. So well, that was not ideal. We kept a three lander, and we wanted to. Hit the next one, ideally. Uh, we're going to bottom this and top this. Uh, all right, so we've got we've got transgress the mind, which gets to answer his uh, his world breaker before he plays it. Next turn, we play Gideon and start pumping out some idiots. Tapped land, sweet. So. Uh, you should just play Eldrazi. I am just not playing Modern until they get rid of all of the Eldrazi decks because it's going to happen because the deck is that obnoxious. I, I think uh, he's got five, so he's not casting anything scary next turn. What's the clock here? If we go plus Gideon, hit him for seven, plus Gideon, hit him for seven again, or we could go make a guy hit him for two, and then the following turn hit him for nine nine, so the clock's the same regardless. The upside to plussing him, though, is that we have the option to emblem him at some point here. Some Gideots? I like that. We're definitely going to use that. So I think I'm just going to... I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cast the Obnixilis here, and then get a feel for what we're going to do based on the card we draw. Uh, I would ban Eye and Temple. I think you have to get rid of two cards. Another transgress the mind. Um, hmm. So yeah, we can't kill him any faster than that. I'm just gonna make an ally and then crack him for two. And then next turn we can transgress plus attack for up to eleven actually, because we have shambling vent too. So. Making tokens makes us more resistant to Ulamog, yep. Build Evolving Wilds, so he can likely cast Worldbreaker next turn. Oh, that's really good. Play this idiot. Transgress the mind you. Ugin. So if he top decks exactly Ancient Tomb next turn, he could Ugin. I'm going to take the World Breaker. Um, so I think the fact that that's the case um, makes me want to... Yeah, I'm just going to emblem this because then he's dead next turn either way, right? We put him to 12 and then we've got... Yeah, so I'm just going to emblem this because if he draws Ugin, emblem makes us more resistant. If he draws the double land, emblem makes us more resistant to and... Uh, and Ugin, so he's dead on board either way. Uh, he forgot to fetch with his evolving wilds, so we got that going for us. Triggers. Opponent concedes. And you were dead on board. I'm not sure why you were waiting. Uh, yeah, I guess we keep everything. Grasp isn't... He doesn't seem like he has any of the smaller creatures in his deck, so I think I'm going to get rid of these Grasps. Sometimes they have, like, the... the 2-3 creature. I'm going to do this, bring in some more removal. 
Another up next list. He wasn't the he wasn't the worst there. This hand's pretty medium. It's got a discard spell on it though, and he mulliganed. If we run off white sources, this hand is very good. If we run off even just one white source, we can secure and start pressuring him. The ruinous paths aren't very good though, so I'm gonna mulligan. And we hit uh, this hand uh, doesn't have disruption, but it's got a clock, so we're gonna keep. We both get to scry. Are you about ready for your nap, bud? Uh, just bottoming anything that's not a land. Soren would be great here after a bunch of mentors, but we want to hit three lands in three turns. Or draw discard spells, either of those, like Duress, Transgress, Lands, those are the cards we're looking for. And we drew a Gideon, so hopefully we don't just miss our third land drop on three. That would be almost certain certain defeat, unless he's also breaking off hard. That's a good point on the wind. And all right, things are not looking good for our hero. We put Ugin into his hand, and we're heading towards missing our third land drop. Uh, the also thing that's a little awkward here is that we have a lot of lands that come into play tapped in this deck, so there's a good chance that even if we hit a third land next turn, it's going to come into play tapped, then we're not going to be able to play the Mentor on time. And, you know, we just bricked off and going to die anyway, so that's magic sometimes. We weren't even greedy and kept the Soren. If we'd, if we'd have been greedy and kept the Soren, like, we'd have deserved this, but we're playing 26 lands, you know? And he's got... So I'm just, I'm just going to concede. We're done. That's, I mean, the top of our deck was going to be good. Like, if this was one more card down, maybe we can apply enough pressure. Like, if we got to play Mentor last turn into Gideon this turn, but he's just going to be up to seven lands and then just, like, play Ugin and kill us, so... I'm going to run upstairs and put my oldest down for his nap. I'll be right back. Uh, hopefully the next match in the standard thing will be up by then. Uh, we're 0-2 in it, but 3-2 uh, cashes out, so we're going to play till we take a third loss at least.
I haven't seen LSV's most recent uh, Delver list. Since people are talking about the Eldrazi deck, I had a new article post on MTG Card Market today talking about uh, a number of things that people often ask me questions about, so you can check that out. You buy singles or beg and borrow. I don't I don't actually own a lot of cards. The few that I own you buy, you buy all the singles. Even non professional players do that. Uh, I don't enjoy playing ramp decks, so I don't play them. Like, to, like the ramp decks give you... They generally give you very little room to outmaneuver your opponent. It's just like, you just, like, keep putting your cards on the table, like, asking, is this card good enough? Is this next card good enough? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, I don't, uh... I don't enjoy playing those style of decks. I like to have some kind of selection that allows me to maneuver a little bit and such, so... I think I just thought the all-in red deck was well positioned last weekend, and I still think that like the two most popular decks in day two were um, Eldrazi and Lands. And if you dump all the Delver decks together, those were um, those were also like in the top three. I think they were just ten different Delver decks. And Blood Moon and Chalice is very good against those decks as well. I will not be in DC. I don't really play Grand Prix. Oh, we got another minute here until our next uh, match starts in the standard event. See if we can rally off the three-two. And I actually just don't. Oh, yeah. DC's the team Grand Prix, right? The team sealed. We're, we are going to play some of the all. The Alda and Red deck was was a blast to play. Uh, my round three camera match is uh, got recorded, so it was streamed. Uh, you, I got very unlucky in the third game. Uh, I don't like. He just had he had what Delver deck does sometimes. Like had three Delvers and three forces, so it really didn't matter what I was playing. He was going to play Delvers. And